microorganisms are frowned upon, especially in the current time. Yet we have been living with them in perfect symbiosis for thousands of years. Not only are they not harmful in certain situations, but they are beneficial. Let's take the example of our gut microbiota, the microorganisms living in our large intestine, which is the last part of our gastrointestinal tract. About a hundred trillion microorganisms from a thousand different species live there. Anything from bacteria, protozoa, archaea, viruses, fungi, and others. In total, they add up to about 2 kilos and 3 million genes. A third of our gut profile is shared between you, me, and other human beings. Yet two-thirds are unique, and we can look at it as a sort of gut fingerprint. Many different factors can influence the gut in a positive or negative way, including, but not limited to, stress, pregnancy, way of birth, epigenetic and genetic factors, age, nutrition, and lastly, exercise. This is where I come in. I set out to answer the question, does endurance exercise have an impact on the gut microbiota? If so, are there any intensity and age-dependent differences? And lastly, could endurance exercise be used as an active aging tool in regards to the age-associated dysbiosis? After identifying the first publication of this sort from 2008, conducted by Matsumoto and his colleagues, a systematic search of the platform PubMed was conducted. 81 search term combinations were used, which yielded 1,615 initial results. 111 papers met the inclusion criteria. After carefully evaluating these papers and summarizing them, I can tell you this. Yes, endurance exercise does have an impact on the gut microbiota, mainly in two ways. Through a decrease in the bacteriotis to firmicutes ratio, which is a good thing, because from prior research we know that an increased ratio of these two phylum are associated with a higher risk of obesity. And secondly, through the increase of two very specific species, coprococcus and facilibacterium. It's been hypothesized that they are variables in athletic performance due to them being able to increase the energy yield of non-digestible carbohydrates. When it comes to intensity dependent differences, there are some. As the intensity goes up, the benefits go down. Sadly, there is not sufficient data to conclude on age dependent differences, and therefore, I cannot certainly say that it can be used as an active aging tool. But given the low risks and the huge potential upsides, we have nothing to lose if we try to implement it.